Okay, it's 12.04, so we'll call the economic development meeting to order. If the executive assistant will please call roll. Black. Kukshavinsky. Here. Blair. Here. Masal. Here. Pick. Here. Grindy. Here. Here. Quorum okay. present. Um, <clears throat> approval of minutes for our June 12th regular meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We're going to skip a few things and jump down to um, unfinished business right away to go to the strategic and marketing plan for AE2S so they can have the floor and not have to sit through some of our other stuff. Okay. Thank you. So um, today we are tackling the branding part of the marketing plan. So we're going to be presenting three branding options for you to review and hopefully choose one of them so we can move forward to the council tonight. I'm thinking ranking them and we should make sure we're turned on. We are. Oh. Okay. We are over here. Yeah, we're on over here. It was just the front table that didn't get on. Small things. <laughs> you want to go to the next? So, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't introduce the <laughs> Taylor and I are familiar faces, but we have um, a new A2S communications person with us today, Zach Addison, and he was the lead designer on the branding portion. So, sorry, oh. <laughs> sorry about that. No <laughs> so, just starting off with quick. Oh. If I may, I sent to each of you a branding philosophy the other day, so each of you should have been able to look at that, uh, and this will all follow based upon that. Correct, yep. It's a three-page summary that I think was in your board packets, and so this is just really summarizing what is branding. I think a lot of people think a brand is a logo, and it's true that a logo is part of your brand. It's that visual identity to your brand, but really brand philosophy is, um, brand is your personality, it's your culture, and especially for um, branding communi communities, it's something that is the community experience. So um, it's a small town, it's quaint, it's got a beautiful downtown, it's the five senses. Yes, it's what you're seeing visually, but also what you're feeling, hearing about that community. So that's what the brand is. So the goal of branding, um, generally speaking, is to identify your identity and purpose. Uh, in this particular case, it's clearly communicating who East Grand Forks is. So when you see that brand, you know it's East Grand Forks. We want to differentiate East Grand Forks from other communities, especially the communities around it. Um, we want it, we always had it in the back of our mind that we're creating this brand for economic development, but it has to be synonymous with the community as a whole. So really can be transitional. And then uh, ultimately this brand is supporting your strategic plan, your mission, your vision, and what you've put in the strategic plan. So when you talk about community branding, there's just some nuances with community branding. And it's, I think we talked about this prior, but it's so, so important to be authentic to your community. Um, the community has to recognize and identify with the brand that you put forward. Certainly this board, ED staff, um, city council, you'll all be spokespeople for this brand. That's kind of natural, but your community as a whole is really gonna be the unofficial spokespeople for your brand, whether you like it or not. So it's really important that they identify with that brand. Um, beyond that, it, it it shows everyday life in that community. It builds confidence in that community, really to the people outside that you're targeting. So um, it builds confidence and trust in your community that you're authentic. So this is just a snapshot of the process we used for um, East Grand Forks branding. When we started this project, we talked to several leaders in this community and in Grand Forks. We asked them open-ended questions. What are the opportunity and challenges you see for economic development in East Grand Forks? And as the 
community as a whole. Through those discussions, some of some themes kind of came out from those discussions. The next process was the community survey. And that's probably the most important part of this branding process because we wanted to hear from the community and we asked very specific questions um, when it came to branding. The next from that survey, from those interviews, from what we learned, we created seven branding options. We took those options to a focus group. And this focus group was made out of the, that target audience. So um, we separated the focus groups from those age groups and then also chose them from here in East Grand Forks, outside of East Grand Forks, boomerangs, which means they grew up here left. Um, Minneapolis area and then beyond. Um, oh, and then I'm going to jump back a little bit about the community survey. So specific to branding, we asked what is the great, greatest asset of East Grand Forks? And you've seen this information. This is just a quick word cloud of what came out, that small town feel, community connected, schools, people are great. Um, when you dig into the details of the survey, you get more supporting evidence of this. And then the second question we asked was question 18, if you had to describe a culture or personality of East Grand Forks, what would it be? And those same words and those same things kept popping up. They're welcoming, it's warm, it's friendly, great schools, those type of things. Um, really that small town feel. So um, as we looked at that, we wanted to be authentic to what people were seeing in that community survey, but we also wanted to look at the target audience outside of this community. So we're looking at particularly workforce, residential, those type of things. So we're looking at millennials, first time homeowners, entrepreneurs, they're starting families, the Gen Xers, they're, they're building homes, they're building their second homes, their business owners, they're raising their families. So what's appealing to those people outside of this community? And some of the research that we grabbed was from, <clears throat> excuse me, Ben Winchester. Uh, he is a expert in um, social science and data and really studies migration to rural areas. He works for the University of Minnesota Extension and so he's done quite a bit of studies on this. And what they're finding from those studies is there's actually um, the 30 to 49 age group, which is our target market, is really um, focused on moving outside of their metro area. And the reason being is it's less busy, um, safety and security reasons for their family, they're growing their families, um, lower home prices as compared to the metro area. And also this age group wants a sense of community, close community and be community organized. So after we did or got the survey and looked at that data, we created seven options that we took to the focus <coughs> group. And the seven options uh, were not designed, it was what the brand could be and the messaging behind it and kind of a few words of how we got to that process. And um, so if you're wondering who's in the focus group, like Andrew mentioned before, it was a variety of locations and a large majority of the people were familiar with the area, whether they currently lived in East Grand Forks or were living in Grand Forks or um, those boomerangs who have moved after growing up here. And then, like she said, we looked at uh, the target areas, and so Minneapolis was one of those areas, along with um, the outside states like Wisconsin or um, Colorado and Utah. And then there's also a variety of ages of people in the focus group, and as you can see, a majority of those ages fell in that 26 to 45 range, uh, which is right inside the target market, but it also had the other views as well. So when we look at what message rose to messaging rose to the top, um, there was three that you could tell people were really connecting with, and all those messages were very positive, and they could be used transitionally between the EDA and the community. And the messages were broad enough to be able to be applied to all things EDA and city related, but also the quality of life things that make East Grand Fork so special, like the family friendly and good education and stuff that we saw come out in the surveys. 
Um, it was also not used by any other communities in the re region, and we're going to wait to show you the results of the focus group until after you see the branding, so you're not persuaded by any of the other people's opinions. So as Andrea said um, at the beginning, a brand is more than a logo, but your visual identity is pretty important. Um, so we wanted to go ahead and create different brand identities for each of the top three that were chosen by our focus group. Um, so we sat down and we kind of went through a different checklist of what we wanted to get out of these. And we wanted to use fonts and overall design that was pretty simple and clear and easy to read. Um, we wanted to design for digital things such as social media, you know, presentations, video, things like that, and also more traditional items such as like business cards and stationery, posters, you know, things that are printed and kind of everyday items. Um, we wanted to keep them simple. You know, this is something that would be used throughout the community. So there's a lot of things it has to tie into. So if it's too specific, all of a sudden you can't use it easily with different things. And then as you'll see in the examples that we have put together, we wanted to keep them in black and white. This is just so they're on the same playing field and you know color is very out there you know it can really persuade your opinion so we kept them black and white just so that wouldn't happen so we're going to reveal the brands now um but i'd ask this group do you want to reveal each one and discuss each one after the reveal or do you want to reveal them out all and then discuss I know what's easier for this group. I'd like to see them all. Yeah. See them all first and then discuss. Okay, we'll do that. I can flip. Because we're going to go from this. <laughs> Not all at once, though, Paul. Don't flip them. Notice I stop. So the first message is our roots run deep. And on the next slide, Taylor will kind of go into why we, that was chosen. But from a design standpoint, I just kind of wanted to explain that a little bit. Um, so basically in the design, you can see we chose two different fonts that are complementary but also very different. Um, our and Run Deep is a very clean, minimal font. And then Roots is somewhat organic looking and kind of mimics what Roots look like. So how we got here is we wanted to play off of being part of the upper Midwest and also the agricultural history of the community. Uh, businesses can take root and grow here, and it really is a family-friendly place. Uh, the community is connected and rooted, stable and safe, and when we think of the brand and where it could go, market, marketing collateral could focus on taking root and growing businesses or families or end families and truly a good life. And some of the words and things that directed us in this um, way for this brand uh, are on the right side. And those were found in surveys and interviews of people in the community. And so when we put <coughs> the brand in action and how some things could look um, with website development is just a quick example of a website. You could also put it on fun things like t-shirts or stickers and magnets or um, even like a seed packet to hand out at conferences or when you're meeting new people or whatever it may be. And the next message is live simple, look north. And for this design, we wanted to really embrace that simpleness. Um, we only chose one font for it and it's a very simple font, very clean looking. Um, the design also kind of makes the viewer look north with the arrow. There's a little bit of direction to it. So this brand is truly shows that it's the best of small community living and you're getting out of the rat race and the city centered living, which is what the target markets want. Um, they want those easy commutes. Look north or looking up, which like Zach said, the brand really actually makes you do it, it has a positive connotation. And this brand is very people focused and it's appealing to entrepreneurs. It's tied to geography, like we mentioned before with the North feature. And when we think of this brand, uh, the marketing collateral could focus on making things simple. It's simple to start or grow a business here because of all the support and things that the EDA can help with. Uh, you live simple here and just the simplicity of the community. 
And again, on the right side are some of the words that people said that showed us this brand. And um, when we put the brand uh, in action again, we have a website example that overall would have a simple look. And you could do fun things with this brand as well, like putting banners up on poles or some different things to pass out, like water bottles and uh, keychains. And the third message from the focus group is life connected. Um, kind of like the other three, we took one of the words and kind of went with it this time it was connected. Um, we know that there's a lot of personal feelings towards East Grand Forks. A lot of people have just that idea that it's a great community and that everybody kind of knows one another. Um, so, but for the overall design, again, two different kind of fonts that complement each other really well. Um, connected is actually connected. You know, the letters are connected. Um, and then this one, we also showed Minnesota and kind of where East Grand Forks is on the map, just to show that relation. So this one speaks to the fact that the community is smaller, but very connected to each other. And that was one of the things we kept seeing is that it's very supportive and it very connected. And it's connected to more things than people. It's connected to schools, the downtown, the Greenway, and also to a larger city. Um, marketing collateral for this one could be based around connecting to opportunities or connecting to nature and connecting to education or even technology. And again, on the right side, there's some different words that showed us that the tr uh, community is truly connected. <coughs> And here's the brand, uh, how it could look. Again, a website and some different things like the notebook and the jump drive and a coffee cup. So these are just some things to lead the discussion as we're talking about um, you know, which message meets the goals of the strategic plan and what you're hoping to do, which message has personality and the broadest appeal, um, which message do you feel will resonate with that target audience, and ultimately which one can you be proud of, right? Because you are going to have to stand behind this brand, it's going to be shown everywhere, so which one is one that you can stand behind? I guess I would open it up for comments. It'd be a little skewed here because my <coughs> logo is real similar to the Life Connected, so my brand for my store is already got that. No. <laughs> Should we take initial reactions by show of hands or? Yeah. <laughs> Personally, I think it's tough for me to decide between them. I think they all have a good initial message. Mm -hmm. And so then just trying to pick one, what you think is going to appeal to somebody the most, I think is, is the hard part. Would it be helpful to see the focus group results? Um, I don't know. the middle one. I, do, let's let's take a vote and see who's right. Take a vote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe see. Yeah, let's see what the vote what says. What the preference is right now from each individual, and that's just an initial. Yeah, just an initial brush for what people think. That's number three. Yeah, we can do that. Let's start with Tim. I told you I designed mine, so <coughs> I'm kind of hooked on number three. like three also I don't like the factory in there and the roots it's too much farming related I'd say one or three throw two out coming on the same page I like one and three I like the cleanliness and the simpleness of the third one 
Um, I kind of like the message a little bit in the first one. Um, so I'm kind of conflicted between one and three, I guess. Number two would be my least favorite, and um, probably three would be my my most favorite. Yeah, the problem I've got with number two is if you're in Winnipeg, you're not going to look north to see East Grand Forks. And if you're in Grand Forks, you're going to look east. So that's just on the compass. If you pick a point on the compass, you're excluding a number of people. Um, I like how the Routes one looks. Uh, it, to me, it's, it's, it is simpler than the Life Connected, but I, I also think... The problem I've got with the roots one is it is a little, you know, tilted towards farming, and it also maybe gives the implicit message that if you're not from here, you know, you don't have roots here, and that is that is an issue that we have found is not a not a the best quality of East Grand Forks. So I, I like the life connected message. Um, we can tinker with how the logo looks, right? Or is that set? No, we can tinker. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, I, I like the the big, the big font or the big letters and roots, and and so, but but yeah, I, I guess the the third one, Life Connect, would be my number one choice of the three. This is just the black and white version too, right? Because there can be a color. You also want to make sure your logo looks good in black and white because yes, sometimes the color colorization can. Everybody really... has a color printer, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I'll be different then. Um, I like number two. I don't like that the factory's there. I don't like that page. I actually like the screenshot that's on number three there. But the one on the left and the one on the right to me are too busy. Uh, the one in the middle is. Because it's got the arrow pointing up, but just, I don't know, gives me a more positive feel. And it's simpler, cleaner looking than the other two with the cursive writing that's there. That's just too much. But I like the picture on number three, though, the most. I think that's a better representation of the community versus number two and number three. I think number, or number one, sorry. Number one is just too much. It makes me think of farming. I don't. I usually. Don't have, <laughs> I, I usually don't have to get to say much. No. I. I um, this, the root one. Um, I know there's a negative connotation where if you're an outsider, you're always an outsider. Um, so that's kind of what I thought of on that one. But. But I like. I like the simple one and two, and I like three also. But. Is there a reason that three was the only one that had? any um, artwork with it. All the rest of it was just words. I mean, you had the arrow granted, but um, the state really stands out in number three. And I was kind of curious why the other ones were just basic letters. What I haven't shared with Andrea yet is that I actually, uh, when I talked with a particular person, uh, one person that I had told her that I was going to share it with, that person suggested having it a state of Minnesota silhouetted on the look north, pointed at an arrow, the arrow pointing to where East Grand Forks is, as part of the logo. That the silhouette of the state. Really, that state can go with any of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Results of the focus group. <laughs> you really mirrored the focus group, so it's interesting. Mm -hmm. So. Can you ask what the sample size of the focus group was? It was. 40. 40? Almost 40. Yeah. 40 people. So this is just an aggregate of everybody's. Um, choices. So if you just go across geographies and age groups, you end up with something that looks like this, where there's not a huge differentiator that pops up. So you drill down and you look at 
the target age groups, and you see that 26 to 45 target, um, Life Connected rises to the top on that one. And <clears throat> again, this focus, these focus groups did not see the designed version. They literally just saw the message. So you can see that that rose to the top. And, and second was live simple, look north, right? Can you go back? <clears throat> so yeah, the second choice was that live simple, look north. Our roots run deep, fell off at that younger age group and that 45 to 56. And then if we go to geographies, our target geographies, currently live in East Grand Forks, really connects with the life connected Grand Forks, our roots run deep, didn't play very well. Same with grew up in East Grand Forks, but have moved. That Minneapolis target market, live simple, look north, resonated with them. Again, they live in a metro area <coughs> and then live outside of Minnesota. And those people live in um, Madison, Wisconsin, Salt Lake City, you know, Colorado area. So you can see how that played out. So you get Live Simple, Look North, and Life Connected, that rise to the top, and probably the top pick is Life Connected. And I don't know if that sways any of your, your choices. What I would suggest is maybe we rank them, so, and then we'll see what the council says and see if they agree that it can go forward. I'm gonna tell you one thing I like about each of these. As you see, on underneath each of these East Forks EDA, you can take off the EDA and put East Grand Forks. You can put on East Grand Forks Police, East Grand Forks Fire, Parks and Recreation. You can put on, you can basically for that last portion after East Grand Forks, you can identify particular parts within the government or the city as a whole. Just had a question. Could you take two and three and merge them together, drop the life simple and say life connected, look north. Would that be something like we can combine the two? Because I mean, they seem to resonate with different groups and both of them kind of like the same thing. Mm -hmm. Just curious if that's a possibility. Yeah, I mean, it is a possibility. The, the live simple was really um, targeting that metro area, getting out of that craziness and <coughs> to a smaller community where you're connected. But, um, you know, really these are gonna come alive too with the content that you place with them. So the subcontext that goes with these, and I certainly that's something we can do. Maybe it's you take the live simple, live connected. That's a possibility too, I agree. I think, I think kind of like what Mike said, thing. Like what Mike said is um, you're just generalizing people from the cities and I think that comes out in the focus group too as you look at Minneapolis. So if they think about East Grand Forks, yeah, they think it's north. So that's why that one stuck out more to them. But we don't want to just... I think they think we're all simple too. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I mean, it, obviously that one stuck out most of the people in Minneapolis where we don't want to just think of just bringing people just from Minneapolis to our community, we want completely everywhere. You know, so that's kind of one reason why I shied away from the north one too, is just like, look north, well, you know, what about somebody from Rosal that might think about moving here? We're not north. Um, but obviously you can see, like I said in the focus group, the people in Minneapolis, that pops out to them because we are north from them. And I thought look up rather than yeah. look north. You can up from Winnipeg still. Yep, and that was played around with a little bit too and then ended up being look north so that it was kind of a geographic reference to northern Minnesota. And it had that positive connotation still to it by looking up. You could easily take the state from number three, put life connected. The thing I don't like about North on it is one of the one of the things that we hear about all the time is, oh, it's cold up there, it's cold up there, it's cold up there. And 
now we're putting it on our header, we're north. You know, I mean, I don't mind the cold, but there's a lot of people that that cold is a huge, a huge um, wall for them. And so I think that's the first thing they see is they go, oh, north, that's right there, cold up there. Instead of giving us an opportunity to show us what our positives are, because we can't change the fact that we've got winter and the winter's going to be cold. So uh, that that's one of the things that I don't like about throwing north out there. That's why I like the picture on the right. Mm -hmm. That's a great picture. It is. Well, it kind of sums up what our community is. It's family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I like it. It's simple. It's there. Now you can take a look around to see what else is here. Do you want to go through and have everybody rank? Well, one, two, and three, and then I think we need to add forward. Daniel's suggestion too about combining two and three for life connected, live simple, as a fourth one. Would that be agreeable with everyone? And just use those four, and we'll call that one number four, and just uh, give a ranking of, of one, two, three, four, or four, three, two, one, or whatever your thoughts are. Okay, go. Daniel gets to go first because. Tim went first, went last, first time, last time. Right? <laughs> well, if there's four up there, I pick four. It would be my choice. Three. <laughs> four. Paul, do you get a vote? I was thinking that you would. I would take four. I like the connection. I like merging the two. Brenda? Yeah. I think Arla? we would have to play with the wording a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's going to get to be too much. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it has broader versatility for us as a city, is what I'm thinking. And that, that's why I would do four. Okay, I think that. I don't want to be in a position, and I, I don't think anybody wants to be in a position that, what do you mean by life connected? What are you connecting to? And, and but if we have life connected, live simple, we can talk about how we're part of the larger group in terms of the Grand Forks metro area. We're part of the larger group, the Northwest Minnesota, the Red River Valley agricultural group. But live simple that we're not having all the hustle and bustle of the Twin Cities and the big cities. So that, that's my thoughts. I'll tell you from somebody who's not from here, who's come from a big city that's been in two hour commutes, the live simple resonates a lot with people from those areas. And that's the biggest thing is, is yes, my life was a lot simpler. I had a six minute commute now compared to two hours. That's it. Really good point. Mm -hmm. I, I just looking at it from my own personal view here. Does that change what anybody else is thinking or anybody's thinking? I like them both, I guess. For me, it, we've got these to look at, so it's easy to pick it. You know, what would it look like? Um, is the message too long is the first thing I thought. That's, that's um, the thing that it, worries it, it, The more you say it, it really doesn't seem like it is too long, but that was the first initial reaction to me is, is the message too long? Is it not um, kind of clear and concise and simple and quick? You know, but mm -hmm. the more you hear, you know, just say it and say it and say it. It doesn't really. It's not that long, I guess. Just a dumb question. What would it sound like if it, if you changed it from live simple to and life connected to live simple, live connected, mm -hmm. live in life? I mean. Like one small small step for mankind. Well, yeah, it just it it's maybe it seems like it roll, rolls better. I like the option. I guess I. Okay. Can I suggest something? We're going to have to talk about the meeting on the twenty first because that's when I'm going to be and the fam. That's yep. why it's on the agenda. Can AE two S bring back that fourth option with some ideas on it and do it the two versions live. And life. So you see two alternates on that. 
and that way uh, we can come back and, and so you make suggesting a final we decision. do meet on the 21st no I'm suggesting we meet in two weeks on the 7th instead oh I see okay the day after the or the, that's not the day after Labor Day. It's the wrong month. Uh, the seventh, the first Tuesday. Of that's August. when Ron can be available too. Of August. Of August. Yeah. Okay. I won't be here for that. You can send us your vote on email. If you email it to me, I will. Assuming okay. I have service. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> when are you leaving so we know when we have to get it? To leaving you? on the sixth. Okay. So. One of my opinions that if we do that fourth option that I would like to see, and I don't know everybody else can give their own opinion on it, is. I do like this state and showing our geographic area of where we're located too, though. I like pointing out where we're at, if it can be incorporated in with that. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I guess, what everybody else thinks, but... And we can do the two options. We can incorporate the state and then without the state, and that might be two different options you have for branding, too. Mm -hmm. I, I would say, too, I, I'd like to see the picture in number three used on just by... The website more, yeah more than than the industrial even though that's who I work for I I, <laughs> I don't want to see that when I first come to a website <laughs> you got a job when you get back or? Uh, I'll see if I got phone calls <laughs> <and that's> <laughs> <laughs> well I think it also it puts it on a level playing field then yep I agree you know we're not swayed because mm -hmm. of a picture it's the same picture it's just the words that are different That work? Is that an okay timetable? Yeah. yeah, that's fine. That's what my you suggestion decide is. You want live, live connected or keep the light? I think that's we leave we'll it up both. to them. Oh. Yeah. yeah, they're going to do okay. both. Yeah. We'll do both. Yeah. So do you want to hold off bringing this to the council tonight then, to the work no, session? No, I'd actually like to hear the same discussion of the council, and then we can add the fourth one. What we're talking about is live connected, uh, uh, life connected, live simple, combining two. Uh, the second and third one here and that, that was part of the discussion Mike Tim you agree yeah that's fine what time is that meeting at Tim? five five I might have to come to that one. you can always watch you're it gonna too. be free <laughs> you're gonna come <laughs> you'll have plenty of time it's very room okay well just remember the first part of it is a presentation on the audit report I think that's yeah, that could be a little while. Come every, come every week if you yeah. file for file for the seat. That's okay. okay. I think I'm good. So it puts us back a little bit, but we can <laughs> push it. Yeah, be real close. Yeah, it does happen. It'll be very close. We can probably still. We might want to talk about the 21st and the 23rd. Okay. Yeah. Right, sounds good. Now, the thing to remember is once we get this in place with the strategy in place, it's going to lead us to what we have to do to implement. And I know I'm getting, I, I'll wait, just we'll hold that thought right there because that part of it is later in the agenda. Okay? But doing things like this means we have to think about how we implement this and make it a make it a reality for the community instead of just becoming something that sits on the shelf. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move back into our agenda. So um, we're at Bills and Communications. Um, we don't just need uh, to review Accounts payable for June 19th, July 10th, and July 17th. Anybody have any questions on any of those as well? on those accounts payable we'll move on um, reports uh, delinquency update thank you I, I had told the uh, chair yesterday I thought we were going to have one but they paid so they are now current and up to date so we have no delinquencies 
moving on to monthly financial reports. Um, attached, I submitted the reports and it's just normal expenses, so I don't know if anybody has any questions on them, but um, just normal activity, rent collected, payments collected for loans. Um, so any questions on that? Nothing out of the ordinary. Questions on the financial reports. We'll move into unfinished business. Oh, this way. Oh. Um, I, I attached the audit documents. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I don't. I guess they're not another. They're not another another number. So what I included was um, it's dated a uh, seven independent auditors report, and it just um, states, in our opinion, the financial statements referred to above present to above present fairly in all material respects respect to financial position of the government activities. So it's um, after the audit, they didn't have any findings that when anything was out of the ordinary that we are following um, government accounting um, procedures and for both government activities and the component union, which is EDA and also um, our enterprise funds, which is sewer water garbage water and light. And then I attached the documents that um, pertain to uh, page 57 was a home, new home incentive, which is a 280 fund. If you look on there um, under assets, there is no number under cash. That's because we are in the hole. So since we are in the hole, it is actually falls under due to other funds. So what it is is the general fund is basically floating the dollars for that negative cash. Um, page 58 shows the revenue and expenses for that account. Um, then we move into um, component units, which is the EDA. We have that split into two different areas. We have housing and we have economic development. And then we have the detail on that on page 89 and 90, which is the EDA component, which is our TIF funds, the general um, administrative fund. IRP loans and our the DRLF loans are basic is really the MIF loans. And so then we have operating revenue and expenses on page 90. And then we move into the housing and we which is Sunshine Terrace, <coughs> our housing loan, which is the, um, the down payment assistant program. And then Town Square is is a building we used to uh, manage, which we do not lo no longer manage, but we still have money that's in that account, so you'll notice there is no activity in that except interest. So, any questions on that? Do we need to retain money in that town square building account? Or could that be, is there a point in time that Well, one time we were going to use it, like when we were replacing the boilers and such at Sunshine Terrace. However, the Minnesota Housing had some of our money, and that was what we used instead. So, but we had, you know, we've kept that there in case we needed for repairs to Sunshine Terrace, like the roof and such. But there was um, some dollars still available that I think they kind of forgot about that we reminded them to so that we got to use that. Yeah, just trying to think ahead. There's going to be a day when we may want to put that in a place where it's more accessible and usable. Uh, the only other thing I'd, I want to mention is that um, earlier today I was with our insurance adjuster. Um, we had a hailstorm and then we had a windstorm. And so we went and looked at all of the buildings within the city to make sure our heating and air conditioning units were okay um, because water and lights building, the DSC building, their air conditioner wasn't working properly, went out and they found they had hail damage. That's why it wasn't really working. So we did go to the infill building. We are going to have them comb the air conditioner and a couple other buildings. There's one at the fire station. Um, there's like three out of the four units. The South Fire Station, and then um, there's a little unit at the Civic Center. And so we're just going to have somebody come and fix them, which will be covered by insurance. If you would like to see a larger uh, scale on the CAP report, the auditor will be giving it tonight at 5. Well, I've got, on there, I have the PowerPoint, I mean, not the PowerPoint, the Excel spreadsheet for all of the tax credits. If you want to see something that's a lot larger. 
Um, just to touch on what Paul was just asking on that town square fund um, with that money that's sitting in there, is the general fund um, where that money would go back to? No, it would stay within the housing area, so it should be technically something probably for Sunshine Terrace. Okay. And and actually, the, the um, general administrative fund is actually funded by the general fund. We do a transfer every year because there is no means of revenue coming in and there is no money sitting anywhere for the EDA fund. So the general fund actually funds the EDA administration. So that money will, the town square money will stay in for anything for Sunshine Terrace in the future? Correct. It'll just okay. stay in that fund. Anybody else have any other questions for Carla? If not, we'll move on to uh, unfinished business and go to the director's report, starting with lot sales. Well, I included in the report, uh, in the agenda packet, my report. I only want to point out a couple of things on the items. One, the total need for the homes, properties, Order City's tax credits, about $25,000 for five years. And we talked about how much that could be. I got the estimates from the county and it's roughly $5,000 a year, so it's about $25,000 total of need over a five-year period. The second thing is we have received the paperwork uh, signed and uh, paperwork from the cutting edge that they agree to the loan documents that we were concerned about. So we're moving forward on that. And that is Mr. Dahlstedt's hands for well, I just, review. I just looked at it, and apparently I must have done something wrong because it had two... Um, notary blocks for Peter and Danae didn't sign the mortgage so she needs to sign it otherwise it's not valid against okay. her. We'll take care of that. If they finally acknowledge that they would do it. Well, I'm just looking at it. So that's the last time we'll be hearing about it? No, we'll hear that it's, you'll hear that it's been recorded so that there's something, a recorded document that everything is done. Right. Okay. Just you deserve to know that it's done and over with. But I will. I won't talk about it. I'll just be able to include it in here. Point is, it's getting old. It is old. It's very old, and it, it's tiresome to go back over the same information time and again. Which is one of the reasons I'm changing the way I'm doing the director's report. I'll include it and just hit a highlighter yeah, here and go, because your time is too valuable to spend going over the same thing. Thank you. No. In there, have we talked about it in the report? Okay. Okay. Um, moving on to new business, um, the tax credits for parole amendment. Does everybody know what parole is? Okay, it's Fairfield Inn to translate it. We made a commitment, we the city and the EDA made commitments to give financial assistance to parole to help the hotel. What we had assumed with the hundred thousand is there'd be twenty or thirty thousand dollars taken out each year. Well, nobody in the state, as I had told you before, nobody in the state was using the program like we were for property taxes. Although other cities are now starting to do it, in calculating the benefit for parole for the first year of use, it was a little bit over sixty thousand dollars. Their need for the second year is a little bit over seventy thousand dollars. The total, so that. Their total need for two years is about $133,500. Um, we only set aside 100000 so we need to amend that agreement and add another $33,500 to the agreement so we can provide the support that, in my opinion, we promised to them when we first did this. Um, I mean, it, it's amazing what the tax credits do, the border cities tax credits do. The disparity credits provide a huge benefit to our to our local businesses, but the border cities tax credits do a significantly larger amount of benefit to our businesses. Okay. Do you have any questions on that? I can go into a lot more detail, but I can put everybody to sleep by doing that too. So if we would approve the additional then that's all they will get then? Yes, the way, we, the way we've worded this revised agreement is whatever comes first, the use of uh, two years 
or uh, whichever comes first, five years or $133,500. Once they exhaust one of those, it's done, they go back into the other. And I have sat down and talked with them and shown them what their taxes will be in the future. And there's, they understand what, what's going to happen. And we aren't, we aren't going back and giving them more than they were promised. No, in my opinion, what we did is we basically made a commitment to help them get on their feet. Right. And our original policies were $100,000 limit, but that was written many years ago, and it doesn't reflect what how the system actually works. When we apply the remaining credits to what they do and what you'd have to back out, that versus the disparity tax credits leaves a difference about $4,000 in their tax bill. I don't think that was the intent from what I can read and ascertain from the records on what was done originally, I think the it was the point was we wanted to give them a benefit to really get them on their feet. That's how I read it, Mike. Need a motion this to approve this? Yeah, this yeah. needs a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, I just have one question on when, when you're showing how much the city has in credits available as of January 1st, are those um, are those kind of replenished or renewed from year to year at a certain amount? Yes and no. The legislature every two to four years provide, has provided additional tax credits to what is now six border cities. The last time they did it, it added about $420,000 to the city's available tax credits. We use them and then when we run out, we, we, uh, we use them as far as the money will extend. And then we can't do it anymore until it's replenished. Uh, there has been a proposal, or have been proposals, to make this an ongoing program where it doesn't have to be budgeted every couple of years. That has not yet happened to the legislature. Okay. But the, uh, it's something that I, I know that I have talked with our local legislators about and that the local legislators are well aware of the benefit of the program. I, I just asked for reasons of that, uh, making sure that, yes, we are handing out fair and equal amounts to the people that are building now and growing, yeah. but then also wanting to have some available to attract other businesses to come in and build as well. we'll be, we will be dependent upon the state to get some additional okay. credits. And that is always the case. At one point, we had $14,000 worth of credits available. At the end, if all of these things that we have on tap right now are approved and that we have to come back and do this for one other business, uh, we will have about $90,000 of credits available at the at, at five years from now. Okay. Uh, moving on then to uh, the Lumber Mart tax credits. Lumber Mart, um, Made, made an investment and added two jobs to their uh, to their business. They have asked for the use of uh, Border City's development zone tax credits over a three-year period. The annual benefit is somewhere around $26,500, so that would be about $80,000 worth of tax credits needed. Um, I will point out for this one, for Todd's trailers and also for um, the homes properties, we need to get one additional document from the state that they are current on all their taxes. And it's been brought to my attention that, that this business may have, may not be current on their taxes. So I would ask that if you recommend approval or on your motion, one, I would ask you make, regardless of whether you decide to vote in favor or against, make a motion to approve because it, it's easier to deal with that way. Um, because a motion to deny the ties means the motion to deny would fail. So I would ask you to make a motion to approve. But at the same time, I would ask that you put a condition on that subject to demonstrating or providing uh, documentation that all that they're up to date on their taxes. That's on both Lumber Mart and Todd's? All three. All three. All three. Yes. yes. The only other thing, comment that I have is is that if you read through, and the reason I was asking for our or our, our approval process, it also indicates that if you're considering approval, then you have certain other timelines that you've got to send out notice to other competitors, and and so are you you're going to approve these before we follow the other guidelines? No, the notice has already been advertised. 
and in fact it sets up for uh, an August 7th public hearing but the notice has been advertised during this month run and, and sent to the competitors the, uh, the what we have to do is put it we have to publish it no actually I think it says in there it specifically needs to be sent out to any additional competitors of Todd's Lumber Mart whoever we're considering I was just reading it today okay. when you sent it to me and that kind of jumped out at me when I was reading it I if I didn't read it properly but no, the way we've done it in the past for when they were originally done is we published it and that serve as adequate notice to the competitors and we're following what those rules were where do you draw the line at who their competitors are I'm just reading what your rules are <laughs> you know and it's a good question you know, but the but, way we've done but, this yeah. in the past and all competitors have to be notified is it's been done by publication and it gets published twice in the newspaper and it has to be done not less than 15 days before the public hearing which is why they were being done this month and why the public hearing is on August 7th. So we already made a motion to improve the parole one. So it's it's Holmes, Lumber Mart, and Todd's trailers that we want to do subject to. Subject to document, time. yeah, subject to tax. Now, Holmes is a new business. There should be nothing involving the taxes on them. Mm -hmm. The other two are existing business, and we'll have to get documentation. In Does that include the individual owner's uh, property, Personal. too? Personal. personal yes yeah, anything personal I and, then, would so. and then doesn't it also indicate in there that if it's an existing business it's basically for one year the well in, in particular lumber mart can apply under the old policy which means it can go more than one year but one point I haven't brought up yet is that because we have just barely starting the discussion as an EDA, you can recommend one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, whatever you think is appropriate. The policy that you recommended and the council adopted suggested for improvements like this that you'd be doing a one year improvement. And that would affect the number of tax credits. That would reduce it to about, two, I would put in $27,000 if you wish to recommend that it be done as one year. I will also point out that Carla has pointed out. Uh, that there are certain things that um, benefits that have accrued to the owner of the company and to Lumber Mart that uh, that are benefits that have not accrued to other people within the community. Is that a fair way to say it, Carla? Yeah. Okay. Do you have your email with you? Uh, I have. I do. But because oh. I, I can read it if you'd oh, like. Okay. I brought it along. Um, when I wrote this, I did not have any negative response to anything from the loan committee. Carla subsequently uh, gave me a, a email that said she does not recommend approval of the Lumber Mart when she's a member of the loan committee. And she pointed out that we paid for Peabody's housing addition, $25,000 for the street, and he forfeited a lot with $51,605 of specials on it, which totaled $76,605. And I believe for that reason you were recommending against this. Correct. Is that correct? Okay. So that's information for all of you to have. The, qu the difficulty is that our policy doesn't address if they've, they've gotten other benefits. What the policy addresses is whether or not they're current on their taxes. But we're also talking about separate corporations. We can tie it all together. Yeah. I mean, but. We did remember when, when Ron, I'm going to put you on the spot, the boardwalk and the linkage is there. Well, what I'm going to say is as this, I think before this group should actually make a decision, you hand out the policies so they can refresh their memory on exactly what they're supposed to be supposed to be making a determination on because there are other catch-all caveats that that give this group and the and the city council more latitude or less latitude depending upon how you want to I think I have enough copies the new business is a one-year tax reduction or tax credit the amount not to exceed five thousand I, I gave you four I couldn't remember which one was which I didn't have it
Did each of you get one? Or an expanding business. Pressure to act today is not as great as it was, and I because we've been excuse me because of the complexity of trying to do what we're, what was proposed required a lot of work with both the county and the state um, Department of Revenue. They have said that we have a little bit of latitude and the date that we have to have everything submitted because they know it's under consideration it's going through the process right now normally it would have to be presented by a certain date but they have told us that we have a little bit of flexibility on there okay so if we need to come back and finish this in two weeks we can do that as well i got one question about how how are these distributed and the amounts um determined you know i guess okay. i'm looking at just if we're minute. looking at what the um what the investment was we're you know just comparing here todd's trailers invested four hundred and seventy five thousand to build a new building and they're going to get five thousand for one year whereas lumber mart invested four hundred thousand with um, regard to lumber mart with regard to todd's trailers he said he wanted to do it immediately before the full value of his addition his new building came onto the market which means that there was a lesser tax value i had suggested to him that he def he wait for a couple of years and we can do it at that time when the value was higher now you how do we determine this come on i just i just look at the, the amount difference you're right and, and i'll show you though this mouse doesn't like to work very well carlo when was that money given to the street just went in this year okay it can only it's only available once in a five-year period it had nothing to do with this yeah, this is housing development yeah. yeah you know what i mean it had nothing to do with border city tax credits okay what we have to go into on here is you're looking at the total column these first four are the taxes for one property for dang, just does not I can get the mouse to work we'll work we'll do this fine um, these are the taxes for lumber mart this is the tax for Todd's trailers and what you do is you calculate it down um, you start this is the total tax burden in places other than East Grand Forks when the disparity tax credits are applied and disparity is mutually exclusive with regard to the border cities program you can do one or the other but you can see that it drops considerably when so I guess my question is then is it's this based is based upon the property taxes their whole property not not regardless it's based of upon what the property the, yes what the is. no it's wondering. based upon the property where the improvement occurred but well, because that's, of the that's improvement a, that's that's complex. Complex. So, yeah. it's yeah. all his buildings so yeah. I guess my question would be is is there a way for us to separate out where these tax credits are more fair whereas I get okay we go back to the parole one and I get okay. giving them 133,000 in tax credit when they just built a eight million dollar hotel or whatever it was right. now I, I don't feel that it's fair and equal to give you know two-thirds of what they're getting for a four hundred thousand dollar building okay is what, there a way to separate what, it though, what I'm gonna say is that the expansion was what happened at which Todd's trailer is proposing is specific to the parcel where he built the building mm -hmm. and that follows the policy Yep. as it was written lumber mart asked for three years it comes back under the old policy the the prior policy as opposed to the new one which was a one-year improve which was a restricted to one year of credits if you wish to bring them under the and I have to bring what they presented 
to you. Mm -hmm. If you, as the EDA, wish to recommend that they be done under the one-year program and have a lesser benefit, that is something that you can certainly do and bring it under the new policy. When and did we receive the request from Lumbermart? Um, Was it after we adopted the new policy? Yes. Yes. I, I guess my... I don't have a problem with giving them a border uh, a tax credit on this, but in, in my thinking, I'm looking at we're going to be end up giving them almost eighty thousand in tax credit on a four hundred thousand dollar expansion. Um, you know, and that's where I say on mm -hmm. the hotel, it was a multi million dollar building, and you look at the percentage Robert. difference, it's it's way way off compared to what what's being proposed at what we give right now. As I said, Todd's trailers, as an example, he restricted it to the parcel on which the building was built. Right. If well, and, you, that's, and that's his, what he wishes. Yeah, but he if elected. that's what and he wants, that's what he wants. We for. have a different request from Peabody. If, you, if the response from the EDA is restricted to the parcel that, that where the new building was built, it will do one year in accordance with this policy. I would like to see it restricted to the expansion, building. the right. building that was but expanded. It's got to be tied to a, pro, to a, a, a particular parcel. Are the parcels, is it all one parcel? Here. I'm sorry? Is it all one, it's not all one parcel then? He's got four parcels. So then you should be able to see which, what, the increase in the tax for the parcel that that's located yes. on. Yes. So that would be that how would you would answer that. Yes. Yes, yep. exactly. Okay. And that would answer yep. the question. By restricting it, it brings in along the same thing as Todd's trailers is, and it follows the same policy. You know, I, like I said, I have to bring it to you, and it, because it can come under the old policy, it does qualify under the old policy, but it does not meet well, the standards in the new policy or the adjusted policy, which was specific for for smaller businesses. So I, you know, if you wish to do it the other way, that's a perfectly legitimate way to do things, and I would be glad. I would be, I would opposed, be willing to I would take be that message. to the difference in what the property is from where it was to the improvement, because that's what we're looking at is what they did. You know, but, what happens if this would have fallen under? It's the same thing. He only did a hundred thousand dollar improvement, but because what that property is assessed that, at, we're going to give eighty thousand. That can't almost. work that way, though. That's okay. the problem. We, we we are restricted. What we have to do, the limitations on what we have to do, deal with the assessed value the total assessed value for the parcel where the improvement occurred. We can't separate it out because the county's equipment and the state's uh, uh, programs don't separate the taxes out like that. It's basically we either have to do all of that parcel or none of that parcel. But you said that the, the improvement is all in one parcel. That's so my we, understanding. So, what so we it could, could be restricted a, to one parcel. Right, right. So that's what we're saying. Yeah. That we'll just look at that parcel, see what the change in the taxes and the assessed value, and just work with that parcel. Yeah, we do with that parcel, but it would apply to all the taxes that are due on that parcel assessed against that tax. And it, it would just be the just change. The You'd only have to look at what the change is because of the improvement. Now, is that you're saying that the state won't allow us to look at just the change? They they don't have the ability to look at just the change and apply it to that. Because of the way the disparity works on here, Diane, there, there is a, sometimes it's more beneficial if you don't give a credit that, uh, against the entire property. The disparity tax credit can be higher than the tax credit you get from the, uh, uh, from the Border Cities program. For example, when I talked to you about parole, the difference between the partial credit and the disparities credit is only $4,000. When you apply the additional amount, the, the difference becomes about $40,000. But it, that's actually what it's going to cost them, though, too. Because so you, it, it's actually apple those apples it's because high. what is the cost that you have, even with the disparity? Take you know what is the bottom line? This is what the cost is, and that's I mean we do that when we do levies yes. mm -hmm. because just because the levy goes up, typically the business property taxes have not gone up because the disparity credit has picked that up. Yes. So when we look at raising levies, everybody's like, oh, you're raising our taxes, you're raising our taxes. I mean, I've done the same property for the last five years, and their taxes have gone down even when our levies gone mm -hmm. up. 
And it's because I mean, so, so I really you know, look at what is it costing them. I, th I think to be correct, we could just look at this is what you're paying for tax this year. This is what you're paying next year. Because that is yes. their cost no matter the dis what the disparity credits are. I think that's what everybody would like yep. is what I'm hearing. Well, we're, we're, I mean, in the scenario we're running at now, he's getting 25% of his improvement back through those credits. Where now, the other, again, I go back to the pro one of a, a multi million dollar hotel that's getting what's the percentage they're getting? Probably 5%, maybe less. Um, so I just, I, just, I just think the number is so skewed that we need to find a way that we're not giving back so much. I mean, we could run into the same situation with another um, somebody in the industrial park that has a lot of property and putting up a hundred thousand dollar expansion but because of what the properties assessed at then they're going to get this huge tax credit okay so what i would suggest is that you direct me or that i can take it back and you don't even have to direct me what i hear you saying is that we want to do it to one year restrict it to the parcel and bring that back to you with the information showing what the impact would be for a one year use of the tax credits on one on the particular parcel. Okay. Then I will do that. Uh, and the other thing way. to keep in mind was that they have a lot that was forfeited. That I mean, if they look, it's mailed to Bob Peabody. It's right on the documentation of fifty-one thousand. Because you talked about forf about lots, but not paying taxes. So just here. That would disqualify him. Right the anyway. Well, that's why we have to get the statement yeah. from this. Okay. The, one other question that I have, though, is, is so we talk about new policy, old policy. So going forward, are we going to go with the new policy and not the, deal with the old policy? Uh, how are we going to? The new policy, the older policy was really directed to the prototype situation. The newer policy was directed to the other three that we've been working on. When I talked to Mr. Peabody, he specifically asked for three years and coming in under the old policy as opposed to doing the new policy. And why did he why did he feel he should be able to come in under the, the old policy since we've adopted the new policy? Because you you're asking me to explain why what his thought process is. I can't explain what his thought process is. In, in other his words, mind, it, 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 it doesn't in, hurt to ask. Yeah, in, it, 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 yeah. That's how yeah. I'm in his mind, it was the right thing to do. We need to move forward from and there. For, from and his, it's just like from his standpoint, yes. But yeah. from our standpoint, no. we have to decide. We adopted it, exactly. a new policy, and that's my and, that's my point. Is is you know going forward, uh, you know, this we're going to use it, the new policy or we're going to use the old policy. What are we going to do here? Can't jump like back and forth. Exactly no. my point. That's why I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. And that's why what I'm actually doing is we're getting done with what the part we talked about before with the marketing plan and the strategic plan. All of the policies will be merged into one, and there will be a new overall policy about how we deal with things, about existing businesses, what they what they can do, and new businesses, what they can do, how we can use the different pots of money and the criteria. So it's going to be a, an umbrella policy that, that we'll be dealing with in the future. But we're not there yet. We're not there yet, and to some, to what the, what his proposal is, is very similar to. Remember the discussion at the city council about the uh, cell tower. Yes. Well, we don't want it here. We want it someplace else. But you have to deal with it as it was presented. That's what we have here. We deal with it as presented. Then we come back if we don't like it, and I hear you telling me to give him different information. We come back and we say this is what that we would consider we believe that you should do it this way is there a way that we can that we can do different policy based upon if it's a if it's a new business that um, you know I, I guess what I'm thinking in is even though it might be that one year tax credit that we can spread it over three years for a new business just because of trying to get up and operating in a little bit of a break every year for a couple years no or? no because of the way the tax credits okay. are applied at the county level and remember what i was talking about i have to get a, a an estimate for each year mm -hmm. and then i multiply times the number of years to get to the total amount of credits requested that are needed for that property so i can't just say you get part of it each year 
Sure. Okay. I have to do it where it's all or nothing for each particular year. So what, where our discussion is really the number of years and that the amount of tax credits are what's necessary to make the program work for that one year. Okay. And that truth in taxation does not come out till November. Well, the state has requirements. Yeah, the state has requirements for when these have to be turned in. But as I said, we've been working with the Department of Revenue. I've been working with the Department of Revenue, so that he gives a, he's giving me a little bit of latitude to work with this. So, and in fact, if you if your preference right now is to make a make a recommendation for one year, restricted to the affected parcel, we can amend amend that. And that can be your recommendation if you decide to go forward with that. Make a motion for that. Well, um, sorry, not with just the condition. To, just to with touch on this real quick, though, when, we're, when I'm looking at, okay, one I'll of our, second it just so that we have the motion okay. on the table. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm just curious of when we say um, a one-year tax reduction or tax credit in the amount not to exceed five thousand. That's not going to be possible. We're going to have to, and that was written before we had the information from the state. So okay. that has to be re, uh, so that's not that has to be fixed. We that's to not possible. Okay, that is it's just simply not possible. Good question. Okay. it's not possible. Okay, um, so I need that motion. I don't know what the wording is. So that number will go up then. It has to go up. It has yeah. to be whatever it is yeah. for one year tax credit. Oh, okay. Uh, it, it just it, that's but not what is a possible it thing. What will it increase to? I'm sorry. What will it increase to? It'll be whatever it takes for that parcel to do the tax credit for the parcel. And we don't know that until we know what the parcel is and the value of that parcel is. So we're changing our policy, is that? Not yet. Oh. We will but we, be. We, need, we will need to. We will need to, yes. Okay. Absolutely, Diane. That's why I just wanted to touch I mean, on we're, that. We're, we're finding we wrote this according to our understanding that we could just do this. They take $5,000 off the tax bill. And we'd be fine to do that. That's not the way the program works. Right. The way the program works is the tax credits, uh, whatever, they go through the calculations, calculate how many tax credits are needed for 100%. That's how many get used. And our estimate becomes within a couple hundred dollars of what that is. So we, we grant that many tax credits to the business. And that could be uh, $5,000 or that could be $55,000 depending upon the magnitude of the improvement. For example, if some if a business if a business built a large manufacturing facility so they could expand, that's going to be a different situation than what we're facing here. We don't know what those are, and in many ways, what we're going to have to do is have that kind of flexibility in the future. But we won't know until we get the estimate what the value, what, how many credits have to be set aside. This was written by what our understanding was, but that's not the way the system works. Not the way the program works. So, what was the wording in your motion? Uh, limit it to one year and restrict to the affected parcel. That was second. And, and, and the criteria. And the criteria. Plus, plus the condition yes. that he has to be current on taxes. Right. Correct. That was second by Diane. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So, we will be coming back for that one. For all three of those, no. Correct? You've already done the one for. We approved the one for the approved, hotel. The, yep. You approved hotel, but you homes. approved homes last time. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Todd's trailers that meets, one the criteria, meets the criteria. Right. So okay. you can go forward on that one. And the the five thousand dollars covers the tax for. Todd's for Todd's, trailers? yes. Okay. Um, if I can get the mouse to work, the amount of credits needed for Todd's trailers is, uh, if I can find it on here, You have to add the county and the and the city, and it comes out to about forty nine hundred dollars. Yes. Okay. Okay. So yes, what I'm doing is I'm taking these numbers when I get them from the county, and I can calculate what it is, and that's that's the number that I'm working from. Okay. So on to Todd's trailers. Then do we have a motion to approve? Motion on that one. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Okay. 2019 budget is the same as last year with a couple of exceptions. I identified the exceptions in your report. The exceptions have to do with, they're really tied to the implementing of the um, marketing information so it would increase the marketing budgets and increase travel a little bit in order to be able to work with some of those things in case they require additional travel. And I would ask that you recommend approval of that. Gosh, do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Diane. All in favor? I have right. some questions. Okay. So when we, when we, um, how do we decide from 620 to 280? Are they going to be kind of the same? And, and my other question is, is that does the city, is the city going to put any kind of budget for this? Only that it won't look like it's all coming from you and it's, you raise your budget so much more. You know, understand what I'm saying? I know, not really. really. Well, I mean, I'm it's, trying to make it's sure going to be for the city in addition to the ADA. Maybe then that somebody, maybe Murphy within the city needs to take some of that money and, and pay for some of it. And so it doesn't look like, okay, ADA is, you know, they've increased their budget by $27,000. I'm just saying for, you know. Yeah, it's not that much, but the, yeah. But no, but I mean, but for the perception. I, I, I understand, and I'm open to that. is a half percent on our levy, whatever. Carla, I'm open to that. It can be I, done. Well, I'm just throwing out there for you guys to think about. Uh, how do I decide? Say, oh, well, part of our levy, you know, this part of the levy is just for EDA. What are they doing? So With regard to 620 versus 280, it's like I do when I go through Ron's accounts. Part of it that are that are related to city properties goes into the 280. The parties that are that are not go into 620, and that's how it's divided. Could this be done so it's split among various departments? That's I, that's very obvious. This is to show what the EDA is thinking, and so that that would be sent, basically it's gonna be given to David and, and yourself, and you'll figure out how we can do this, or if we can do this, and uh, to the extent to which we can do this. Okay. They, and I was just thinking, because you know, they've given us kind of a whole big picture, you know, so you know, in a smaller picture, you know, we're gonna spend $12,000 just for marketing the lots. So. You know, it, will that be easy to distinguish? I guess is kind of my thing. I don't know. It just—it's just something to think about, I guess. So. Yeah. Is there—is there a policy on how that's supposed to be done? I'm just curious. Uh, policy like regarding how those things are. You know, I mean, you're asking a question about, you know, when does this get charged and what does that get charged? Isn't that, don't we have a policy on how that's done or rules? It, or is there a like formal that? policy? No, there's not something okay. in writing. Is there an informal policy? Carla and I, when we well, went through the legal bills, what, you know, we started know? splitting. Marketing was for the lots. Okay, yeah. so you know, they just feel on the radio and they spend $12,000 doing that. Yeah, that's easy. Okay. But when, you know, when, when they're sitting here and they're talking kind of big picture how this is just for, you know, you just put the city at the end. You know, I, I, That's right. I just, I guess I want to, you know, when the bill comes in, we can say, okay, this was for the CD, or this was, you know, where, yes. the, where you know, the person's going to ask me, what should we put it to? And I guess that's what I'm saying is, is if there is quite something questionable like that, maybe there should be a little bit more of a formal policy on how that's done then, so then maybe there isn't a question. That's all I'm asking. I mean, well, some things are mutually benefit, mutually beneficial to both. Reduce that amount. Well, and I guess, you know, as a city council person, you know, what are your feelings on that? You know, do we want to market the city as a whole, or is just EDA going to market the city for us? You know, and mm -hmm. that's... And those are good questions right. for the council. So, so I guess I brought it up so that he can have, mm -hmm. think of that and maybe bring it up with the council too. Which is so. why I brought it up here so that it could be, it, start perfect. to be discussed. Exactly, here. exactly. Because it's, it's an item that needs discussion. Right. And the split is just a case of, you know, I, I try to look at the relative value between what's going to 620 and 280 okay. and do it that way. And is it a perfect science in some things when we do, for example, the builder show, the, the, you know, home show? For forks, that's an expense that's directly tied to 280. For some things, it's it's uh, it's much more um, cloudy the line between the two. Some of what was going on today, for example, will benefit the city as a whole in particular, and it will also benefit 280 because we can use the same information and the same marketing 
uh, critiques and, and even down to the logo and everything that will benefit when we market uh, properties that would come under the 280 account. So right. it, has an, it has an extra benefit. And how do we assess that? And that's just, just my question is, is this seems to be something that's fairly new to us yeah. and kind of an uncharted area. So is there certain rules that maybe should be made? That's all I'm asking If it comes down to it, Carl and I will talk about it, or Carl and David well, and, and I will yeah, talk about and, it. You know, we'll and out the council, it's like the other thing is if you put some money into it, you kind of take ownership too. Yeah. I just want to make sure that there's enough transparency here that people realize what, what no, we're doing. So, and that's, you know, that's my only concern is just the perception on that. You're absolutely right. I agree. You know, and like you can see, Carla, could, you've, have you seen the ones I do when I do Ron's bills, for example? Because I put it down, which account it goes into. I mean, no, it's I fine. Do. I just, I, I guess, wanted people just to, especially I, the council that, you know. It's important to make sure that everybody understands why. I know when the connected really connects with Water and Lake because, you know, you get the electricity connected too, so. Yeah. Okay. So we have the motion. Um, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, moving on to August 21st meeting. I thought we talked about August 7th with AE2S coming back. Yep. And I, and you've already will made you, your move. Will you bring the um, lumber mark back at that time? If you've made a recommendation for one year. I'm just going to present it to him. That. And it is okay. one year. The EDA okay. has recommended one year. And we can talk about that tonight at the council meeting. One year and restrict the effective parcel with the condition that regarding current taxes and if the council acquies, you know agrees with that it goes forward like that okay. it's just a case of informing the applicant that this is what you've recommended okay say so, something i was going to ask that eda sign out in the uh commercial out on the uh, industrial area, uh, industrial area that EDA sign, is that on, is that sit on uh, the lots that belong to? That, I don't know exactly where it is with relationship to where the street right of way is. It could be on city owned property or it could be on land that is owned by Drummer Holdings. Yeah, that's but what I'm that, wondering. That EDA, it has to do with the way the project was financed. If I remember correctly, because but, it talks about, uh, Carl, if, if I'm, it says e project finance by EDA for the street. I think that's what it I, talks about. Oh, probably. And that's and, the U.S. And that EDA was, as opposed yeah. to what, I, what I'm <clears throat> concerned about is take a look at those lots. Is there some maintenance requirements on drummers, holdings? Uh, I know that uh, the, that our person who handles lot problems was talking to those folks. Yeah. to get it done has notified them that they have to maintain those lots because it looks yeah. junky mm -hmm. I know that that has happened it has already happened tell him if he doesn't get it handled we're sending it Ralph <laughs> <laughs> okay but yeah I, I, I know for a fact it's already happened okay do we have a motion to adjourn motion all in favor aye, aye. aye. any opposed meeting adjourn oh. when are we going to are we going to this second Oh, on those things, okay, on those things, look at those. They're part of the reason why I asked for additional marketing.